Kashmir is a fortress. Tens of thousands of Indian soldiers line its streets and highways. Police vans announcing there's a curfew in place do the rounds. Boys raising anti-India slogans are chased away. And there are checkpoints everywhere. We're asked for IDs and curfew passes. And after some convincing, we're allowed to go ahead. Because of the environment of fear, it's been hard to speak to Kashmir's people. So away from the eyes of the security forces, we've come into the small lanes of old Surinagar. In a one-room home, we meet an elderly couple. With phone lines cut off, television has been their only source of information. Modi has done what he wanted to do, but he's left us to die, Asha Hakim tells me as she breaks down. What India has done, it's done for itself, not for us. They've smothered us, they've destroyed us. Their son overhears our conversation and joins in. How are we free, he asks. This is worse than being in jail. Outside, people are curious, asking for information, telling us how angry they are. What you're seeing here, stones strewn across the street, signs that a protest took place here earlier. Clashes like these have been breaking out here in Sirinagar and parts of southern Kashmir as well. But the anger inside isn't really spilling out onto the streets as we've seen happen before in Kashmir. The reason for that is that people aren't able to communicate with each other and because of the tight security deployment. When the soldiers begin to withdraw in the evening, a few stone pelters come out. What will happen when the curfew is lifted? is the question on everyone's minds. Today, Prime Minister Modi addressed the nation, defending his government's decision. There are parts of the region where people are welcoming his words. But here, they've lost faith in Indian democracy. Yogita Lamai, BBC News, Srinagar.